Hello Northwest Trains, back in the loft and back with another unboxing. We have got this Acura Scale Exclusives Transpan Express Mark 5 set. I just turned up today. Been waiting for this for a while. I but strangely, I, as you probably know if you've been watching all my videos lately, all my pre-orders from the last four years have so seemed to have turned up and within a month of each other, which is bizarre. So we got Transpain and Express 5 Car Mark 5, Nova 3 set, including driving trailer. Now, um, I mean, just the box itself looks stunning, doesn't it? It's like something you can put on a wall or on display, doesn't it? It re really does look nice. Now, uh, this turned up in a massive cardboard box. Yeah, there's nothing in the box other than this. There's no um, bubble wrap or any other form of packaging, so hopefully everything's okay. Now, just move the main box out of the way. There we've got a layer of foam and there we have it. Let me just see if I can lift them out. Let's have a look at that. They look, they look okay, look well packaged. So we've got the four coaches as well as the driving trailer. I've got to apologise again about the loft light in the way. But I've just got no space on the, the layout board anymore to do these uh, unboxings. Well, certainly a big one like this. Um, this uh, magnetic stick here, I presume it's for the lighting or maybe something to do with couplers. I think the couplers are magnetic on these. To be honest, I've not really watched any other videos on them because I wanted to get my own opinion on them again and, uh, well, learn about them myself. Um, so here we go. We've got the Transpain and Express Mark 5 driving trailer, four coach units. Well, so it's five coach altogether. If you want to take a little look at that, that's all the information on them. And say they were brought over in I think 2018, they were in service at the end of 2019 after a few uh, teething problems which seems to plague every new bit of rolling stock at the moment. The um, new Mersey L trains which is my local, they've just come into service on one part or one part of the network and they've been testing for a good three years so um be interesting to see. So right. This is something I'll probably need in a minute, is the DC, DCC decoder fitting and body removal. Now it does say um, try and avoid doing this often because damage to delicate parts. So that already puts doubts in my mind, but I'm going to have to fit one I think. And we've got a nice little diagram here of the formation that they should go in. Now, a very substantial parts list as well. Look at all that. Incredible, isn't it? All that for uh, basically a, a coach. Just shows how much goes into these things, doesn't it? All these parts here. Hence the, the high prices that you get now. Well, although we'll come to that in a sec, but I think this is quite reasonable. So with these, we've got um, internal lighting. The driving trailer car has uh, cab lights, directional lights. So again, I think they, they only run through the DCC does say you can uh, use a switch um, on the blanking plug if you're only on DC so I presume that's to turn it on or off so I'm just seeing if I can actually get this open now it does feel quite heavy I don't <laughs> I don't really want to break any there's no sellotape oh yeah there's a bit of sellotape so I'll tell you what I'll do I'll get the cover off this uh, properly and then uh, we'll have a look at the coaches in a sec. Right, now I've got the uh, box on. So I apologise if you can hear like a thumping noise in the background. One of the neighbours seems to think he's opened up a, a nightclub. Uh, it is ridiculous how loud they are sometimes. But luckily I'm not next door to them. I'm just about 10 hours down. Right, so we've got one coach open here. Fairly lightweight. It's funny how small the wheels are to them, isn't it? Uh, underneath, see the detail there, you've got the fans. They are very nice, very nice coaches. You can see the interior detail. Now these all got lighting in them. I presume that's the uh, destination board, or coach designation, sorry. And we have uh, magnetic couplers there. They look really close coupling, so it's going to be interesting to see how it copes with uh, the curves on my, la uh, my layout. Now, got a little detail pack here by the looks of it. Now, these are the destinations 
Let's have a look, see if we can zoom in. So we've got Scarborough there. What, we got out? what else have we got here? Yeah, that's all Scarborough. Oh, Liverpool, Lime Street. That's basically what I'll be doing, Liverpool, Lime Street to Scarborough. And a very fine little detail piece here. So that's to go back on, on the glass here, I think, once the destination goes on. I take it that's what it's for, or maybe not that specific particular coach, but let's have a look. So this is the driving trailer, so this is much heavier, as you can imagine. And look at the detail on that. So you've got an NEM pocket, so uh, these can be towed by another engine. Uh, so there we go, that's what the glazing's for there. For the headboard there, once the designation's been put in. But quite interesting actually, because normally you don't get to do that yourself, or if you do it's just a, a stick on. Now that's got Coach A on it, you can see all the interior seating there. It's all offset like it is in real life, it's not um, just all generic. Looks pretty good. Got a separately fitted uh, wiper on here. Quite big as well, isn't it? Sprung buffers. Yeah, tiny little wheels on these modern rolling stock. It's, uh, I do find it quite funny. So... What I'm going to do is, I'm going to attempt to take the bottom off and uh, put a decoder in. And uh, we'll get these on the track now and uh, give them a run. Right, I managed to get the um, body off. Now, I did manage to break a piece off here. Well, not break a piece off, luckily it just unclips. I think it should have been glued in. There might be a slight residue of glue on it. So luckily I can stick that back in. Now, we can have a little look at the internal details, so we've got the driver's cab there, or guard's cab if the car, guard goes in there. So, uh, running in reverse, we can put a little figure in there. And you see the lighting boards, I've fitted the decoder, just a, a back one of pinch from another loco. Now, we've got the uh, Stay Alive unit here, I think, I think that's what it is, a Stay Alive unit. Now, I did plonk it on the track just to try it. And I took it off the track and the lights were still on for a, a good two minutes, at least. So, you know, normally you stay alive last five or ten seconds, which is adequate for going over a dead spot of track. So uh, that's, that is pretty impressive. Um, certainly for, for a, an analogue layout, anyway. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get the, the body back on now. And uh, we'll get it on the track and uh, have a little play with it. But the other thing to mention, I never, um, I haven't put these in yet, because I want to double check first. I haven't seen anything in the manual, so I have to look it up again. But I did put the destination in the front here, and they just fall out, and the glazing just falls out. So if uh, someone else can let me know, have they glued them in, or what method have they used? I, mean, I thought possibly they might be magnetic or something like everyone else on this train, but uh, no, so... For now, I've left them off, which is a bit of a shame, but I want to be sure before I start putting glue or anything on the uh, on the coaches. So I'm going to pop this back on and uh, we'll have a little running session. So uh, again, back in a sec. Right, we've got uh, the Mark V set on the track. I'm just going to see now about the lights. So we put zero on. So that brings the headlights on. One brings the destination light on. Now it looks a bit daft at the moment because we've got no uh, destination signs. Now change direction. You can just about see the red lights come on there. It's um, quite funny having the little red lights and you still got the, the uh, white headlights on to an extent. Now let's uh, bring the Class 68 online. I'll leave the sound off for now. Let's just bring it out to the station and uh, see what it's like. Be interested what these magnetic couplers are like on the curves. It does say in the booklet that they are for display purposes, so I haven't got very high hopes for them, but we'll see. I think for a five car set, they should be fine on a level track. Now this logo hasn't been around for a while either, so it might be a bit jolty. There's a little bit. Not too bad. I 
Right, well, I'll turn the camera around. We've got a derailment already. Let me just uh, swivel it over. <laughs> coaches are fine. It's the connection between the uh, loco and the coaches that failed this time. Right, I'll, I'll put it back on the main line now and uh, see how it does with the rest of the layouts. So that's in reverse. Obviously, like my DRS set, I want to run them in reverse and forwards. So uh, we'll see. Let's just sort this out again. Right, so it's done one circuit so far without derailing. As you can see that coupler still pulls on that coach, but so I'm going to put it down to the logo, not the coach's fault. The magnetic couplings on these seem fine at the moment, really close coupling, nice and realistic looking. The only thing I haven't found out yet is the uh, driving trailer, because the lights see seem to just pick and choose when they want to work. It should have the red lights on now, but it isn't. So, I've got to play around with that, might just be the decoder. Come around here again. I don't think these coaches have got any chance on my second radius point, so I'm not even going to go there with them. So they're just purely going to be on the outer track or on this part of the inner track. I'd have to change the couplers for them to work, I think. Oh, well, they look good and they sound great on the track. Just have a look again now. Yeah, there's very little info on the DCC in the booklet, which is a bit disappointing. You've got to guess what numbers, what light. So one was the cab light. Uh, sorry, the destination light. I've not found the cab light yet, to be honest. Anyway. We'll do some running sessions now. See how we get on.
Okay. Just thought we'd have a quick summary now. Now, um, the connection between the loco and the coach, I've changed that to um, a hunt magne uh, magnetic hunt coupling because uh, a few occasions the loco has pulled the coaches off the track, similar to what I've had in the past. The the dapple couplers they just they dangle too low, and uh, they're not fit for purpose in my opinion for uh, mother rolling stock. I don't know why you get super detailed models, but they just sometimes you just miss out the basics of things. Really, just get the loco to work or the coach to work before you even think about adding the detail. Uh, that's just me. People with perfect track on the layouts and like like nice wide sweeping curves. They probably won't have a problem anyway, but um, that's really downside so far, apart from uh, the lighting here and obviously the destination boards. I still haven't put them on yet because I want to see what other people do with them first, whether they glue them or have some other method. I thought a good idea might have been, like, again, magnetic because that seems to be the theme of a lot of this stuff now. But um, no, I don't. Uh, so we've been able to do that but um so we've got the directional lights on now so it's in the forwards direction so we'll just move the 68 forward and see what happens you probably noticed from the video that the directional lights tend to go off it's actually stayed on <laughs> typically for this clip so let's change direction i have given it a good run in as well so it's gone off now i did give it a good run like i say just to where the contacts in because um a few people people have said it could be that let me just change again so we turn the lights back on again and change the direction of the loco that wrong way <laughs> let's see now that has actually stayed on for a second time for a bit but it is frustrating uh, when it was running on the layout. You you will will be if you look back on the video, you can see that the lights flicker and go off. It has actually stayed on again now, so maybe it's an improvement thing. But I was wondering, could it be the decoder? Could it be the contacts? But uh, I'm not too sure. That's actually stayed on surprisingly. <laughs> I'm not sure how long for. Right, I'll just quickly change the camera angle and uh, show something else. Okay, I thought I'd uh, dim the lights for this bit. Now, uh, one of my favourite running sessions is doing the uh, the nighttime scene. So these coaches should fit perfectly into that category. Now this is the wand we mentioned earlier, the magnetic wand. So we just run it along the coach at the top here somewhere. There you go, the coach light goes off and on. Easy as that. I did wonder whether this had something to do with the uh, cab light and the direction lights not working. The cab light doesn't work because that's function 2 on my controller. And as you know, function 2 doesn't stay on on a Gage Master Prodigy. So that's going to have to change on the settings. Directional lights, I don't know what's going on. I don't know whether it's a problem with the electrics, the decoder or the pickups. Um, they're obviously not running off to stay alive, which I'll demonstrate now. So these coaches have a stay alive unit fitted, which means if I take this off, the lights stay on. Now that is a brilliant thing from a cure scale and um, something I always recommend on the smaller locomotives when you get them sound fitted. I think that, that's a nice little touch. And like I say, you're looking at 45 quid. I'm not even gonna attempt to put that on because it's too dark, but for 45 pounds, Per coach this works out as I think it's £225 for the set of five. Um, if we can get these little teething problems solved with the directional lights and the destinations, I think they're a bargain coach really. Obviously, it is expensive, but when you think a standard Bachman or Hornby coach now, you're looking at least £40-odd without any lighting whatsoever. You know, these are pretty good value. I do like the close coupling. I have managed to run it, um, 
the driving trailer first in reverse so technically loco's in reverse at slow speed on the outer track without it derailing hence i changed the couplers because every bend that went on it was pulling the coach off the track going in reverse so the horn coupling did help that so again i'm gonna to have to update this video i'm gonna be working over the next seven days so i'm not really gonna have any time to be playing up here but i hope um some of my uh, followers or people just watching the video who see this i've got the answers for me if not i'll drop a cure scale and message and see what they think so um so far um i like them but i can't say i'm happy with them yet fully so um be really interesting to see how other people get on with them so again big thank you for watching and uh keep an eye out for the next video bye for now